Sometimes in life there are old things, new things, spectacular things, miracles and beauty. These things are very easy to find if you look for them individually. Sometimes they come in groups of one or two, but rarely do you find them all together. So I'm here to tell you a story. A story about a little place tucked away deep in the mountains of blue, lost in a paradox of time and history. This is surrounded with rolling hills, steep cliffs and mountains high. But the story isn't about the trees, mountains, hills and cliffs. It's what runs through and over them, sewing them together with timber and steel, weaving around the mountain making its way into the valley below. The resting place of the iron horses and steaming giants, and even the diesel giants, painted in blue, green, crimson and black, standing grandly in their shed. But to fully understand how it started, we must go back, go back in time, to the opening of the railway. The 7th of October 1869 and clanging and banging of sledgehammers hitting railroad ties echoed through the hills and valleys. The final preparations were in place, men and women rushing and bustling around almost tipping over the other person, trying to clean the platform and paint the picket fences in a light caramel, almost beige. The gardens were trimmed and watered, the smell of dust after rain was in the air, but there wasn't a cloud in the spring day. The chefs and cooks frantically in the kitchen, cooking pastries and cakes and making sandwiches. The hard-working jolly men finally finishing up their job, head to the pub for a well-deserved dinner and drink, staggering, covered in dust and dirt. The day coming to a close and the sunlit sky fading to night, and the brisk night air hitting the warm windows creating a light fog, the railway now calm and ready for the day to come. The morning smell of bakeries, foundries and chimneys, like the people of the town, started to stir. The church bells ringing the familiar chime notifying of the fifth hour of the eighth day. Men, women and children all dressed up nice, walking to Clarence to await the first train. Happiness, eagerness and excitement shone on young and old. Children hardly containing their excitement to see the iron giants of soot, ash, smoke and steam. As minutes ticked by, the station became more and more crowded, and everyone eager to buy a ticket and see the train. As the clock mounted just off the station near the canteen struck 6.58, a faint noise could be heard. The noise grew louder as the steady chuff started to become heavier, louder and faster. What? A deep, loud, watery whistle echoed through the air. In the distance, a large cloud of white smoke pushing up and out of the engine, and, steady, and a steady pattern of chuffing and puffing of three cylinders, keeping pace. The engine painted an elaborate crimson red, gold and black lining, with white numbers pushing backwards amongst the lush green bush. As the large steam locomotive wheezed into the station, hissing loudly, the smell of the driver's breakfast of bacon and sausage being cooked on the fireman's shovel hindered in the smell of the burning coal and hot oil of the gallant old engine. A small boy around the age of nine walked up with his mother to the cab of the engine and peered in looking godsmacked and amazed. The engine, however, had started dozing in the warm spring sun, waiting for the guard's whistle.